Welcome to Pharmacology. In this section, we'll go through another gastrointestinal disease, which is PUD. This PUD refers to peptic ulcer disease. So just bear in mind that uh, based on the diagram, the ulcer can also occur near the esophageal area or the duodenal area. Right. As an overview, we'll first look through very, very briefly about the physiological regulation of the peptic acid secretion in the stomach. You need to know how is it being regulated in the normal condition. Therefore, it will then link to how does the mechanism of the drugs that can act in the area. And also, uh, another note to take another thing to take note is that um, this is video for the part A of this whole PUD class. Later on, there'll be part B and part C um, to complete the whole story. Regarding PUD, you need to know briefly about the symptoms, the causes. There are two main causes for it, which is H. pylori and the, another one which is prolonged NSAID usage. Another part, um, which is the treatment. Uh, and also to know the differences between the medication, uh, especially focusing on the potency and also some special issues about the medication. All this will be um, other sections that we go through in part B and C, right? So, and also bear in mind the more clinical aspects of the overall management of the disease will be covered in the class too. Okay, under the normal regulation of gastric acid secretion, so here you can see is what we call a parietal cell. So this is the cells which lines um, the stomach area, right? So imagine this is how the whole how it looks like. So this is the stomach lumen where the food is in contact with. So you can see here there's quite a few complicated players in this whole area. So the first thing I'd like to introduce to you is the H2 receptor. So you can see H2 refers to the histamine receptor, which is over here. So what happens is that once it's being activated, it goes through a series of intracellular activation, such as the CAMP pathways and protein kinases, then which then causes the translocation of this H plus, K plus ATPase. So this is what we call in a very simplified way, which is called a proton pump, because this, once it fuses into this area, which is called canaliculus, um, basically, the term of canaliculus refers to um, like a narrowing part, like a channel or opening, right? So over here, you can see the receptor, the proton pump is here. So why is it called proton pump? So you can see there's this H plus over here, right? Uh, which is the acid part of it, right? Because it's in the stomach, it's supposed to be HCl. So this H plus, H plus sorry, will be pumped into the stomach area, right? That's why it's called proton pump. And this activation requires this potassium pump together at opposite direction and also requires energy whereby ATP is required here. Right? So yes, so just to reinforce the name, this is H plus K plus ATPase. Right? And there's another player here called muscarinic receptors M3. So muscarinic receptors, as you know, it links to the relaxation effect and so on as well. When you are full in a way or when you're relaxed, when you eat better, your digestion will be better in a way because again, it has a similar effect as the H2, although with different intracellular signaling over here. Right? There's another player here as well, which is the CCKB. Right? In another diagram over here, um, just to um, trying to show you the diagram to highlight a few other players, which is the CCKB. This is actually the gas stream receptors over here that can interact, which then modulates the release of the histamine, which indirectly then controls the activation of the H2 receptors here. Right? And the M3 receptors are also here as well. Okay? Cool? So let's move on then to the disease of the PUD itself. Okay, for PUD, there's a few classical presentations of it, uh, which includes epigastric pain. So it's like, um, that's why some people say, oh, I have gastric pain, right? So it can, the person could also feel nausea, fullness, bloating, right? And so on and so forth. That, but bear in mind, there's also some alarming symptoms, meaning um, this which a person should not be experiencing. Uh, because if they have these alarming symptoms, it could actually uh, reflect that 
the ulcer is getting quite badly so that there could be a puncture in the stomach lining bear in mind the stomach lining is actually a very thin layer of cells actually right although uh, to protect the stomach from being um, corrosion or corroded by the acid secreted by the stomach cells by the parietal cells itself there's actually mucus surrounding uh, the lumen area right but if there are if the people if the if the patient actually uh, experience symptoms such as blood such as blood vomiting right weight loss anemia it could actually indicate the loss of blood uh, through a puncture a possible puncture at the gas at the stomach area which then causes damage and therefore there's blood loss in the, in the cavity which is obviously not good and obviously any severe radiating pain is not good as well so what the dangers so yeah any bleeding related to POD not a good thing right so there's a few causes so the common one is uh, H. pylori infection so basically not not everyone with H. pylori infection will get PUD, but a lot of people with PUD actually have H. pylori infection, right? So another thing is this NSAID drug use, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but bear in mind it has to be a prolonged use over years perhaps, or even a few months at least, uh, for a possible occurrence of PUD. Unless the person has a PUD as a background first, then um, the NSAID drugs might aggravate and make the symptoms worse for the PUD, right? There's also stress-related mucosal damage, which we'll go through later, but there's also other more uncommon reasons for it. How does H. pylori causes PUD? So literally, H. pylori is a type of bacteria, right? So there are two main mechanisms. I'll just go through it briefly. So basically, uh, you can see that um, the tags are all over here as well. So it has this urease activity that increases the pH, right, which is again not so good because you need, a you need the stomach area to be at a low pH, meaning high acidity, right, and also increases the inflammatory markers, uh, mediators to make the whole area inflamed. So overall, it causes um, some effect on the gas stream, which increases, yeah, so activation of the increase or excessive gas stream release will then lead to the more parietal cell proliferation so obviously when there's more parietal cells at the stomach lining there's more acid secretion more acid more chances of getting um, ulcers right so the easier way of detection is the urea breath test because it detects the urease activity so these are some of the tags as well um, to describe the mechanism of h pylori induced injury Right, so another part is the NSAID, um, so especially chronic use, again NSAID uh, will inhibit the cyclooxygenase activity, so reduce the protective prostaglandin in the stomach, so which then again causes increased gastric acid secretion, and also some adhesion molecules expression will increase, and there's more damage, right? Okay, so, and secondly, it can also cause direct topical injury in the stomach itself, right? So basically, NSAIDs, what happens is that it can actually be ionized and trapped in the cells to cause more further damage, right? So overall, it again causes increased ulceration and bleeding, right? So go and find out what are the examples of the NSAIDs which, which, are commonly, which can commonly cause PUD. And obviously, there's actually a difference between the non-specific uh, COX inhibitor, meaning they can equally inhibit COX-1 and COX-2, and also the uh, versus the COX-2 specific inhibitor. So in general, um, COX-1 is supposed to be, theoretically is supposed to be the more protective one. So if someone took with POD or to use uh, NSAID for a long term, so we actually try to recommend a COX-2 specific inhibitor because it reduces the risk of POD, because it reduces um, what we call uh, the, post the reduction of the protective prostaglandins in the stomach okay right so another two um, which are slightly not as popular reason for PUD the first one is the stress related mucosal damage uh, this is not the common stress that we're talking about like stress from work we're actually referring to like people in ICU actually so if patients with head injury or burns that actually has the highest risk of um, PUD because somehow it um, there's increased stimulation of the vagal, remember the M3 receptors, so there's more gastric acid secretion, 
right? Another one which is um, which would then link to the dosage of the drugs used later on, which is called a Zollinger Ellison syndrome. So from the fancy name, it actually refers to a neoplasia, meaning it's like a cancer, right? So in this kind of condition, uh, it might not necessarily be a cancer, sorry. So it actually causes stimulation of very large amount of acid, right? So therefore, it causes severe ulceration. So actually for people with Zollinger syndrome, we actually need to prescribe double dose of the drugs that we're going to talk about in part B in the next video, right? So, yep, so that's for how would the dose, we determine the dose for the patient with the Zollinger syndrome is that uh, there's a therapeutic goal. So this is the concentration that we are going to yeah, we try to hit, right, to reduce the risk of the ulceration. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you. Sorry, couldn't find my pointer.